Oh, come on, put your hands together for this choir tonight. Oh, come on, let's stand on our feet tonight. Give God some praise in this place tonight. How many need the Lord tonight? Anybody need the Lord in here tonight? Come on, open your mouth. Give God some glory. Give God some praise in the house of the Lord tonight. We're grateful tonight for this choir, and we're certainly tonight come to the most important part of any apostolic service, and that is the preaching of the words of life tonight. Out of every dispensation God has dealt with mankind, he has always chose the foolishness of preaching to save those that are lost. Not that preaching is really foolish tonight, but to the natural mind tonight. It's hard to comprehend to the natural mind when the Lord is dealing with the spirit and the soul of man tonight. So tonight, we're just honored tonight to have one of our great pastors all the way from Ward, Ohio, Elder Philip Sheely, who pastors the Greater Apostolic Faith Church. And tonight, he's going to come to us and break the bread of life to us tonight. Let's stand on our feet tonight and give God a praise as the man of God comes to speak to our hearts and to speak to our minds. Pastor Philip Sheely. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We give honor and praises unto God for he is our life. To our Lord Bishop and elect Lady Bowers. To our President and elect Lady Dawkins. To the Vice Chairman and elect Lady Brown. To all of our bishops and district elders and pastors we say praise the Lord but most important of all to my Nubian queen she is the cream in my coffee the sugar in my tea and she is the mother of all my children She is the elect lady of the Greater Apostolic Faith Church and the person of Minister Deborah Sheely. We bring you greetings from the Greater Apostolic Faith Church in the city of Warren, Ohio, where the Lord has blessed us for the last 18 years uh, by his spirit, his power, and his might. We thank God because we know God is real. And he's real all by himself. And we thank God from whence he has brought us. For truly the Lord has brought us from a mighty long way. So I would you get your Bibles and turn with us for this fleeting moment. To the Gospel of St. Luke. Chapter number 6. Luke chapter 6. We shall be reading verse 6 through verse 11 in the gospel of Luke chapter 6 verse 6 through 11 <clears throat> great is your mercy towards me your love and kindness Towards me, your tender mercy I see day after day forever faithful to me. Always providing just for me. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. Great is your mercy towards me your love 
loving kindness towards me your tender mercy I see day after day forever faithful towards me you're always providing just for me great is your mercy towards me great is your grace in the gospel of saint luke chapter number six starting at verse number six through verse 11. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? To save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and commune one with another what they might do to Jesus. Eternal God, our Savior, Lord, you who rule and super rule this world, Fathers, once more again that thy servant come boldly before the throne of grace. We come tonight, Lord, asking that thou would give us clarity of thought, precision of speech as we come to preach your word. Shabbat. Yeah. God, speak in this place. Send your word, Lord. Send your anointing that makes preaching easy. And speak in your word a sweet delight. We pray tonight, Lord, that thou would have your way in this place. Speak to our minds, speak to our hearts, and speak to our spirits. And then, Lord, don't let us leave the same way we came, but revive, refresh, and renew us. Lord, we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, and thank God. I want to talk to you tonight for a little while. Our subject shall be drawn from that seventh verse of the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. I want to talk tonight for a little while from the subject increasing opposition. Increasing opposition. There's nothing worse than to have somebody to come and have an accusation against you. And they are turning other folk 
against you. And the reality is they don't even know why they don't like you. Nothing is worse than to take someone into your heart and into your bosom and count them as a friend and a brother. And they are the first ones to stab you in your back. It is a horrible feeling. And most folk in the church don't want to have anything happen to them. But at the same time, they feel that they can do anything to anybody else. But I come to remind you tonight that the God that we serve, he don't sleep, neither does he slumber. And just as sure as he is Lord, whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. And most folk don't believe that. But I want you to know tonight that there are some principles in the word of God that neither you nor I can change. There are some things that you are going to have to pay for then it's important to know that in life of every person that names the name of Christ, there's going to be some periods of opposition. Whether it is by your friends, community acquaintances, or by people that just with GP, general principle, just don't like you. And you got to be careful that there are others who try to tell you what to do with your life. And all the while, their lives are in a wreck. These are people who have all the answers, but none of them are working for them. Because they haven't come to the realization that the answers that they have really don't work. When they need to come to the conclusion that Jesus is really the answer. You got to let folk know that when they talk about you, that you are a follower of Jesus. And you have to do what God has called you to do. And you have to be found doing your father's business. And you've got to make up your mind that no matter what comes or goes, I'm going to obey the Lord. Uh, the story in our text opens here with tension in our text. Because there are a group of men who have gathered together at the synagogue. And they are watching Jesus. The two groups were the scribes and the Pharisees. They watched him to see if they could find some reason to charge him in an open opposition to the Sabbath. Giving rise to the idea that if folk would try to find something on Jesus... Surely they're waiting to find something on you. And I want you to know tonight that there are some people uh, that are caught up in a fallacy that to them everything is negative. And I want you to understand that the Bible declares that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you have to be careful who you hang with because there are some people who don't have anything positive about them at all but their own doings and sometimes they're not even positive about what they want to do themselves and a person that sees everything negative is a mixed up individual but I want you to know tonight that our God can take the negatives and turn them into positive. The only difference between the saints 
and the things that we believe and the folk in the world are two words. One is called difficulties and the other one is called impossibilities. But with us, uh, there are no impossibilities because with God, he can do anything. Uh, there are some difficulties that rise from time to time but God has a way of turning our difficulties into possibilities and at the same time give us a fresh revelation of who he is and he can turn impossibilities into possibilities for the question is asked in the book of Genesis chapter 18 and verse 14 is there anything too hard for the Lord? So let all those things in your life that are supposed to be impossible that you are facing and folk tell you what you can't do. Because when you believe God for what they say you can't do, that's when God can turn it round for your favor because God takes the impossible and he makes it possible to him that believe now if you don't believe that then you are supposed to wind up with nothing you're supposed to walk around look like you can't get anything you supposed to walk around and look like you're backwards in your mind and mixed up and confused but to those of us who believe God all things are possible to him that believe because we believe in him because he said all things are yours the Bible tells us that if we seek his face and do the Lord's will Peter said in 2nd Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3 according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness uh, so that tells me that my daddy owns everything and then the psalmist come back in Psalms 24 1 and 2 he said that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he had founded it on the seas and established it on the floods and since God can speak to the water and dry land and tell them to separate surely your little old problems and that little old difficulty that's going on in your life and them folks that's trying to tell you what is impossible in your life God can fix it for you and you're talking about you want to move but folk are telling you you can't afford the house that you're looking at but I want you to know that God can move on your behalf and call the banker to look you right in your face and tell you your credit score won't allow you to get what you're trying to get and he'll tell you you don't have enough money for the down payment of the house that you want to get and and it looks like everything is working against you. And he'll scratch his head and say, I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, but we're going to let you have the house anyway. And you can just give God praise, honor, and glory. Because you realize that it wasn't in the banker's hand. But it's just a thing called favor. And if you got God's favor, you don't need a whole lot of money. I say if you got God's favor, you don't need a whole lot of good credit. And if you got God's favor, you know the right one to do the right thing for you. Am I right about it tonight? Clap your hands and give God some praise. 
So our God is able to move in impossible situation. This whole situation opens up with tension, with multiple problems. Look at somebody and tell them you may have multiple problems, but don't give up. God is still in control. It doesn't matter how much tension is risen up against you. In this will I be comforted. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I seek after that, that I might dwell in the midst and in the presence of God. And I come to tell you tonight that even in the face of rising opposition and in the midst of hard times and hardships, I'm so glad that the Bible tells us that Jesus don't change. For he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he did it for Moses, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Abraham, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Jeremiah, he'll do it for you. And if he did it for uh, Elder Brown, he'll do it for you. Just slap fire with your neighbor and say, I know he'll do it for me. Uh, I want you to know tonight that God is still in control. And you got to go through some things. And you got to understand that you just not going to go sweeping through the city. As you study God's word, God's word has got to come alive in you. You got to understand that there's a difference between the rhema and the logos. And God takes you through what you go through so he can give you a logos. He wants to give you a personal word from the Lord. See, it's one thing to quote the scripture, but it's another thing when you got to live it out in your life. Because the devil will let you jump and shout and dance and speak in tongue. And I tell him at home, he'll dance right with you. and He'll quote the scripture right with you. But then rising opposition comes and, and it looks like all opposition is against you and look like you can't get no help from nowhere and you pray and look like God ain't saying nothing and the devil slips up beside you and he says where is your God now can you dance now with all this pressure on you can you still give God a praise can can you still lift up holy hands can you still tell him thank you when you're about to be put out and you are about to lose your job there about to repossess your car can you still quote and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and them that are the called according to his purpose the devil will try you through trials and opposition to see if your worship is real and if you need a ham and organ if you need a praise team do we have to do all kind of calisthenics to get you to praise God but is there a real joy down on the inside is there a real spirit down in your belly that no matter what I got to go through as long as I got King Jesus I got enough to start all over again am I right about it say yes say yes say yes clap your hands and praise him there are rising oppositions in your life and you got to understand that testing time comes to everybody and you got to understand that the test comes to make sure 
that you're sure. Uh, and you got to understand that the word has got to be more than a cute saying. Uh, it's got to be deep down in your soul. Uh, and as I come to my close, uh, I want you to understand uh, that the stuff that you got to go through uh, in the midst of opposition, uh, God uh, will teach you uh, how to turn pressure uh, into power. Uh, you don't hear me. Uh, I say God uh, will teach you uh, how to turn pressure uh, into power. Uh, it's just like a locomotive uh, that runs by steam. Uh, they keep turning the power up and they keep putting the coal in and it has a gauge on it and lets you know when it reaches a certain temperature uh, and when it reach a certain temperature uh, I want you to know that there's a relief valve uh, that's connected to the drive shaft uh, and when it reach a certain pressure uh, the engineer pushes the relief valve uh, and the power uh, goes from the boiler uh, to the drive shaft uh, and cause the wheels to move uh, I come to tell somebody uh, that when opposition comes uh, that's when you get a real praise that's when praise is not only in your lips but it's in your heart so when you come to God's house you know what David meant when he says enter his gates with thanksgiving and I enter his courts with praise and I will be thankful unto him and I will bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever I come to tell somebody it don't matter how bad it gets when it gets bad get dark and gloomy don't worry don't fret because God does his best work in the dark room when you can't see your way when you got to trust him anyhow and you stand and declare to the devil and your situation that any way he bless me I'll be satisfied am I right about it touch your neighbor and say neighbor you got to have a yet praise yet will I praise him if you won't help me I'll praise him by myself I owe God a praise I owe him a hallelujah I owe him a thank you Jesus and sometimes uh, you got to have a thank you fit uh, when you're all by yourself uh, instead of having a pity party uh, have a thank you party uh, Lord uh, I just want to thank you uh, because you've been so good uh, you woke me up this morning uh, close uh, in my right mind uh, you gave me strength ah uh, uh, you kept my heart beating uh, you gave me joy uh, unspeakable uh, and full of glory uh, slap your neighbor and say neighbor uh, you need a yet pray praise him if you got to praise him by yourself have church off by yourself as I close there was a sanctified church they were having church and the spirit of God was in the place moving all over folk were running the house falling out there was a deaf dumb child in the back of the church he was moved by the spirit he couldn't talk so he went in his pocket and pulled out some matches and struck the match and held the fire up and when that would burn out he did another one a sister got excited and thought he was trying to burn down the church but his mama said no no baby you don't understand he's trying to tell you I feel the fire burning I feel the wheels are turning and if you praise him whatever you got to go through God will make a way somehow I said God will God will yes he will make a way 
when the doctor said no God says yes when the banker say no God say yes am I right about it say yes say yes say yes increasing opposition and when the devil comes against you that's just mean you're on the right track that's just mean you're properly in line with God and you prove to the devil by your praise because praise is your weapon uh, when you should be sad when you should be depressed, when you should have thrown in the towel, you got a yet praise. Clap your hands and give God praise. Even in the midst of increasing opposition, God is still able. 18 years ago, God sent us to warn uh, to fix a mess. And when God started moving, in six years, the walls were just, we were packed. And it was time for us to find somewhere else to worship. And I really didn't want to build. So I went looking for some other place. I tell folk, I tell on myself all the time. Found this Catholic building. Somebody told me it was for sale. I called to talk to the bishop. First question they asked me, well, who are you? I told them what I wanted. No, you don't need to talk to the bishop. I talked to the property manager. And he told me they didn't have any property available for sale. It's about two months later. I kept hearing it was for sale, so I figured I'd call back. When I called back, the same man answered the phone, and he told me, didn't I tell you two months ago? I said, Lord, how could this man remember my voice? I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. And the Lord blessed us to proceed and build 13,000 square foot sanctuary. And we thank God. <laughs> that from beginning to end, folk kept telling us, you'll never do it. We've seen that before. Yeah, they recorded it. They, they filmed it. They did all that stuff, groundbreaking. And all they did was shovel some dirt. And I kept telling the people, the Lord said, Deal. Increasing opposition to everybody. Tell I said, I don't care what they say. All I know is what God said. And it was so amazing to me that all those folks that said it couldn't be done, when they dug the foundation and poured it, they delivered the material on the job, they came there by the Carlos Bishop just to touch the bricks. I said, That's awful funny. Y'all said we couldn't do it, but y'all come to see if the material was real. But God did it. So it doesn't matter how much opposition that you have to face. God is still in control. If you're here tonight and you're not saved or you're going through some difficulties and you need prayer, we're here to let you know that God is able to move in your situation. And God is able to meet every need. So if you're here tonight, will you come? Salvation is available for you. You can be saved today. God wants to deliver you from your dilemma. And whatever holds you down and holds you back, wants you to know that you can be set free today today is the day of salvation you don't have to leave here the same way you came is there one tonight hallelujah 
Eh, we thank you for your anointing, your glory, and your majesty. Bless every ear that heard, every heart that received. We pray right now, God, that you would encourage your people and fortify them and take them higher in you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we say amen tonight? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise for the words of life tonight. I feel as in my spirit tonight, and I don't believe I'm out of order tonight. The man of God made an altar call tonight, but I believe there's some saints here tonight that's going through some things in their life. If you're sick in your body tonight, you need to stand tonight in the house of the Lord. Some of us are facing things with children and our marriages and things we go through in our life. And God is certainly able to help us to get through these trying times in our life tonight if you're here tonight the Lord's a healer as the man of God preached tonight this man a man with a withered hand in spite of the opposition he had to step forward and allow God to have the preeminence in spite of what was happening around him in spite of the spirit he felt in his life in that place if you're here tonight stand tonight if you're here hallelujah you're here tonight hallelujah god bless you god bless you wanted the back tonight wanted the back tonight somebody else tonight whoever you are stand tonight there's so many times we come to meetings and we worry about who's looking at us and what people feel and what people think tonight hallelujah let us bow our heads tonight father tonight we're grateful for the words of life we praise you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place. And even the blessed soul that has stood in this place tonight, Lord. You see the need. You see the desire right now. Move by your spirit, Lord. In his life, in his heart, and in his mind. Whatever the condition may be, we know that all power in heaven and earth is in your hands. Have your way now, O oh God. As he has stood by faith tonight, move now, Lord. And we'll give you the glory and we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen.